Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. Let us pray. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. As we come before you, Lord, we make ourselves open to your Holy Spirit. May your presence enrich us and draw us closer as we worship in your name. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want to welcome each and every one of us to the service this morning. And for those of us watching online or they're going to watch a bit later on, good to see you and hopefully see you in church soon. Uh, if you are worshiping with us for the very first time, welcome to St. John's. Uh, just to remind you, we've got uh, toilets towards the um, uh, lobby uh, and more toilets upstairs as well. And if you have some young ones amongst us this morning, if they become um, unsettled and want a bit of space with them, the George Lewis room will also be open for you to just have um, a small break with them. It's really good to have uh, each and every one of us um, worshiping with us this morning. The words are, of the service are all in your order of service. Um, if you can just join in with the words in bold when I read the ones uh, in lighter colors. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. And let us recognize his presence with us. And we'll just take a moment of silence as we steady ourselves before the presence of God. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship him together. Faithful one whose worth is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives. For the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we rise as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 290, Jesus is Lord. Let us rise. Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it, for by his power each tree and flower was planned and made. Jesus is Lord, the universe declares it, John, moon, and stars in heaven. Cry, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Praise Him with hallelujahs, for Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Yet from his throne eternal, in flesh he came to die in pain on Calvary's tree. Jesus is Lord, from him all life proceeding, yet gave his life a ransom that set in us free. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, praise Him with hallelujah, for Jesus is Lord. 
Jesus is Lord. Oh, see the mighty conqueror. From that he rose, and all his foes shall own his name. Jesus is Lord. God sent his Holy Spirit. Trust the God of the Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Praise him with hallelujahs for Jesus is Lord. Praise him with hallelujah, for Jesus is indeed Lord. Let us be seated. And coming to a time of confession. Our Lord Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of God, is kingdom of heaven, is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord. Confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our own home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. So may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. How wonderful that he is, the God who forgives us 100%. Amen. And we collect our prayers together. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 And we'll rise to sing a couple of songs together of praise and worship as we we'll continue to glorify our risen Lord. Let us rise. We'll take the first song, Light of the World, we'll steps down into darkness and open our eyes. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of our life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that 
You're my God. I'm your together lonely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so high, exalted, glorious in heaven above. And humbly you came to the end you created, all for love's sake became born. So here I am, hallelujah. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, and you're together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me, and I let I know how much it costs to see my sin upon the cross. And I never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, and here I am to say that you're my God, and you're together, lovely, all together, worship, all together, wonderful to me. Yes, Lord, here we are to worship. And here we are to bow down because you are altogether worthy of our worship this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our next song is thank you for the cross and thank you for your redemption as we continue to thank God for the price he paid on the cross for us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Buried all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail and Wash me in your blessing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Seated on the throne. We crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. High and lifted up. High and lifted up. Jesus, Son of God. The darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Sing it from the top. Hallelujah. Mm. Is the Lamb. Thank you for the very hand. Bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came. And gave amazing grace. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the name, best hand. 
Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Seated on the throne, we crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. Rios, high and lifted up, Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the cross. And we thank you for the price that you paid for us. That through it we are redeemed unto you. And unto your love and into your salvation. To you be all glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us sit was Angela bring us our readings. The first reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 5 verses 11 to 14. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is taken from John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 19. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish. Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment round him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore about a hundred meters. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. 
Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you, dis you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said, this is to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, if you don't know me, my name's Chris, and it's a real joy to be with you this morning. Uh, we're going to look at that passage together. Um, so let's, let's uh, pray first that God will help us do that. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you speak to us uh, through your word, the Bible, by your Holy Spirit. And we pray that you'd help us to understand this morning understand with our minds, uh, but all the more with our hearts. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today, uh, our passage this morning really brings up this for us. Coming back to God. Coming back to God. Now, I don't know kind of what comes into your head when I say that. Uh, you might be thinking, oh, maybe this uh, talk is aimed at people who might not be a Christian already. Uh, and yes, absolutely, really relevant for anyone who wouldn't call himself a Christian. Absolutely, plenty to say about that. But if you're already a Christian, a follower of Jesus, which is most of us here, I'm sure, this morning, I don't know if you realize this, but coming back to God, that's a daily issue for us. That is a daily issue for us all. Um, try to picture this situation with me. Um, situation is, uh, it's at the start of the day, and you're in uh, your kitchen, uh, there's a cup of tea there, or whatever you like to drink first thing in the morning, and you're there with your flatmate, perhaps, or whoever you live with, perhaps, um, and you're both Christians, and you both follow the Lord Jesus, and you both have your Bibles there, you usually have it there in the morning, first thing, they usually pray to God first thing in the morning, so you're both there, sitting opposite each other, a little table there. If someone could look into your hearts, both of you, at that point, it would seem that your situations are very, very different. What do I mean? Um, for you there, uh, you're feeling really bad about yourself at that point. Because yesterday, uh, you didn't do very much. You had, you had a real down day, a really flat day and any plans just kind of failed. And you feel really bad as you woke up this morning. For your flatmate sitting opposite you, it seems that they're really different because they had a, they had a really great day yesterday. Uh, they had a great day, they, uh, they worked hard, and all their plans seem to just happen. And they're feeling on top of the world, brilliant. So they're feeling really good about themselves. So it seemed that your situations are really, really different there in the morning, but actually, Here's the thing, they're not that different. Because in both situations, there's an issue for both of you at that point, which is coming back to God. 
What do I mean? Is that for you, you're feeling bad about yourself and you're thinking, do I talk to God this morning? I'm not sure what to say to God this morning because I feel pretty bad about myself. I'm thinking actually, I'm pretty sure God's disappointed in me. That's what you're thinking. Do I come back to God? Um, but for your flatmate, the other side, they're feeling good about themselves, but also they're thinking in a way, they're thinking, they're, um, they are thinking, well, I'm not sure I need to, to say anything to God this morning. I'm not sure I need to come to him this morning because I'm on top of the world, I'm feeling all right, I'm, doing a, I'm pretty fine on my own, thank you very much. That's just what is, you're thinking in your heart. So it's the same issue, coming back to God or not seems very different, but it's actually the same issue. You don't feel able to come back to God. Your flatmate doesn't feel they even need to come back to God. It's the same issue. So coming back to God is a daily issue for any Christian. And um, looking back over my week, the past week, I found myself, you know, being both those kind of situations at different times in this past week, and maybe you have as well. Today's Bible passage, I pray it really helps us with this. What is it about? It's about Peter coming back to Jesus. Uh, Peter, you know, if we don't know, he's the, he's the, the team leader in a way of Jesus' disciples, his followers. He's bold and courageous. He's a strong guy. Uh, but he came crashing down because he failed Jesus really totally. The night before, the night of Jesus' arrest, he deserted Jesus and he denied even knowing Jesus, his best friend. He's run away from him. And Peter's experience of coming back to Jesus here it can help us all today, I really pray. So do join me and follow along if you'd like to um, as we go through and see what happens and how it's important. We're going to start looking from verse 1 in chapter 21. We see here that coming back to God starts first with God, not with us. Let me say that again. Coming back to God starts first with God, not with us. Okay, so think about this. Um, when you've fallen out with someone, it does happen, doesn't it? Uh, one of you always has to make the first move to put things right again. Am I right? That's right, isn't it? You know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's very hard to do, especially when the other person is more at fault, you think, right? You know what I mean by this. I mean, you can think of all sorts of times if you could have argued and then you dig your heels in and who's going to move first, right? Peter and Jesus had fallen out. And Peter was totally to blame. And that is really clear because he deserted his best friend, denied him, even knowing his best friend. Now, if you and I were in Jesus' position here, we would easily think, Peter, you make the first move. You come to me. You do that. We could easily think that. You'd better, uh, you better come back to me groveling. Yeah? But let's have a look at this and see who makes the first move here. It's Jesus again and again and again. And Peter just responds to him. So let's read from verse 1. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, their sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. So, so uh, watch here. Jesus is making the first move to the disciples, to Peter, isn't he? Verse 5, Jesus called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he'd taken it off and jumped into the water. So Peter here responds to Jesus' move, doesn't he? Yeah? The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about 100 meters. When they landed, they saw 
a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. So look, look, look again. Jesus has been making the first move. Do you see? Jesus has prepped breakfast for them. A hot breakfast after a cold night on the water. Wow. Verse 10, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. So Simon and Peter climbed back in the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. You see, the first move again, isn't he? He's inviting them. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them. Again, he's moving to it moving to them, isn't he? And he did the same with the fish. Now, it was, this was the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Do you get the point there? Do you get the point we're seeing? Who is moving towards who? It's always Jesus moves towards Peter. And then Peter responds, Jesus moves to Peter. And he responds, Jesus moves to... Do you see? And in the same way that Jesus makes the first move to Peter so that Peter will come back to him in the same way for any human being to come back to God, to come back to him for the first time ever, or after that, any time that we stray for him, for anyone to come back to God, it's only ever because God makes the first move to us, not the other way around. This is really big. This is so important. This This is what makes Christianity the polar opposite from any religion. What do I mean by this? Think of it this way. Okay, think of it. uh, You've got a huge ladder, right? And at the bottom of this huge ladder, I don't have a huge ladder with me. I think we do have some. I could have brought some. (laughs) Next time I'll bring our ladder out. A huge ladder. And humanity, we are at the bottom. And God, however, you understand God is at the top. And a massive distance between the two. And all religions would say, well, okay, how do you bridge that distance? Well, it's up to us to make the first move. We need to climb up the ladder to God in whatever way, uh, in doing good works, in uh, spiritual exercise, meditation, anything like that. We make the first move to come up to God. And then he responds to us. All religions would say that in some kind of way. Christianity is totally opposite to that. Totally opposite. Christianity says what happened is that God came into the world through uh, through Jesus, in Jesus. That God made the first move to come down to us, stepped into his world, died in his world, lived in his world, was raised to new life in his... See, he's made the first move coming to us and we respond. You see, totally different to any religion. Now, if you're here this morning and you wouldn't call yourself a Christian, um, I I wonder if maybe that's a new thought for you. Something to think about. I wonder what you think of that, perhaps. Because maybe your idea of God, you know, if he's there, you know, I think of him with his arms crossed. Thinking, you come to me, you come to me, you know. The truth about God that we see in Jesus is very different, very different if you're a Christian, well, yeah, think of your, your daily life. Again, think what a difference this makes, that God makes the first move to us to bring us home, to bring us back. Uh, as I said for myself, earlier in the week when I was just um, not feeling that great, to be honest, I had to think in my heart, well, do I have to move towards God for him to then bless me and love me? Is that it? Do I have to move towards him until he uncrosses his arms at me? No, 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 no. I've had to, He already has made the first move. He's always got his arms open. And what a difference that makes in that moment. Total difference. Coming back to God always starts first with God, not with us. And we're going to move on to the next little part of the passage, the last few verses, really, to see what else we can see here about coming back to God. Here in these next verses, we see this. That coming back to God is marked first by our love, not by our works. I find verses 15 to 19 
And he has such a moving encounter between Jesus and Peter. You know, Jesus has invited Peter back so graciously. And here, perhaps, and maybe you can imagine Jesus um, he just, you know, you know, having had breakfast and Jesus kind of takes him aside, you know, should we just stroll down the shore a bit? Can we chat? You can picture him. Verse 15, let's, let's read from here. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted. Uh, But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. So what do we need to see here? Um, Peter, if you didn't know, Peter uh, is going to go on to do great works for God. Okay, So he'll work to, um, to pastor God's people, shepherd God's flock, the language of um, taking care of sheep, that's what that's about. He'll take care of God's people. He'll work to multiply God's people. So for 30 years, he's going to risk his life by boldly telling the world that Jesus is God and he's risen from the dead. And in the end, he'll be martyred because of that. So Peter's going to do great works for God. But here's the thing. What does Jesus say here is the first mark to show that Peter has come back to him? Is it Peter's great works that he's going to do? Is that the first mark of coming back to God? If so, it would be like Jesus saying to Peter, asking him, Peter, to show that you've come back to me, what great works are you going to do for me? How are you going to prove that you're back with me now? Uh, You've mucked up before. How are you going to do better this time? Is that what Jesus asks Peter? Is it? It's not, is it? It's not at all. What does he ask him? Peter, do you love me? Three times, in fact. Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Three times Peter had denied loving Jesus. And here, three times, Peter invites, uh, Jesus invites Peter's love for him. And do you think Peter gets it? Do you think he does? Yes, he does, doesn't he? Because he replies, yes, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. So he does not reply saying, he doesn't say this. He doesn't say, um, yes, Jesus, I love you, and I'll prove it to you. I want to do great things for you. Please believe I'll do better this time. No, he says, Lord, you know that I love you. So here's the thing for us. Again, in the same way, in the same way that Jesus tells Peter that love is the first mark of coming back to him, In the same way, when any of us comes back to God for that first time or daily, any time, our first mark is to enjoy loving God. It's never about proving ourselves through our works for him. Never. So for yourself, think for a moment. Um, Think of Jesus asking you that, Same question. Imagine it. He asks, do you love me? How would you answer that for yourself? Have a think. 
you might easily be tempted to reply, uh, yes, Lord, but I won't say it. Not until I've proved it to you. But you might be tempted to think, yes, Lord, but I feel I, I, can't, I can't say it. So I, can, I feel I can never prove my love to you. Jesus says, I'm not asking you to prove it. Just do you love me? For who I am, God, and what I've done for you. I've sacrificed my life for you. I died your death for you. And through that, I've forgiven you for all that's wrong in you. Coming back to God is marked first by our love, not by our works. Never, never that. Um, there's, a, there's a children's story that I quickly want to do, kind of share with us this morning. You might have heard of it. Uh, it's called um, The White Handkerchief. It's quite a short story. Um, I won't read it all, but let me summarise the first bit. Um, it just helps us understand this, I hope. Uh, the story is about a boy, and he runs away from home. Well, he, and, you know, probably uh, a young adult by that point. He's run away. Um, so he grew up in a small red brick house uh, with his family. He grew up there. Uh, but as he got older, he turned against his parents, different reasons, and um, ended up being in debt, and his debt's piling up. And then one day, he stole his parents' cash and never went home again. Never went home. And years went by. Years went by, and he got into trouble and sometimes he thought, well, yeah, I'd love to see my parents again, but would they want to see him? And so at last what he does is that he writes a short letter to his parents. And this short letter to them uh, ends with this. He says he wants to come back. He says, I know it is unreasonable of me to suppose that you want to see me. So it's up to you. I'll come to the end of the road early Thursday morning. If you want me home, if you want me home, hang a white handkerchief in the window of my old bedroom. If it's there, I'll come. If not, I'll wave goodbye to the old house and go on my way. Let me finish reading the story, how it finishes. And now it was Thursday morning. He had arrived at the end of the street. It was still there, the house. But having got there, he felt in no hurry at all. He just sat down on the pavement and stared at the stones. Well, he could not put it off forever, and after all, they might have moved. If the handkerchief was not there, he would make a few inquiries before leaving the town. He had not yet had the courage to face what he would do if they were there and simply did not want him. He got up painfully because he was still stiff from sleeping out and the street was still in shadow. Shivering a little, he walked slowly towards the old plane tree where he knew he could see the old house as clear as clear. He would not look till he got there. He stood under the boughs with his eyes shut for a moment. Then he drew a long breath and looked. Then he stood staring and staring. The sun was already shining on the little red brick house, but it no longer seemed to be a little red brick house, for every wall was festooned with white. Every window was hung with sheets, pillowcases, towels, tablecloths, handkerchiefs and table napkins, and white muslin curtains trailed across the roof from the attic window. It looked like a snow house gleaming in the morning light. His parents were taking no risks. The man threw back his head and gave a cry of relief. Then he ran up the street and straight in at the open front door. That's what it's like to come back to God. He's already always made the first move. He's been there waiting, waiting with open arms, always. And he's not waiting for you to prove yourself. He just loves you. And then Jesus, he died for you. So whatever you're feeling, whether you're feeling bad, you're feeling good, come back to him. 
Come back to him. Whether you've never come back to him before in your life at all, his invitation is to come back to him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your amazing goodness and kindness that you would move first towards us when we could never earn or deserve that kindness. Thank you that you have done that for us through the Lord Jesus Christ who came to show us who you are, to die for us, to die our death, and so we are forgiven in him. Father, whether we are really new to these things or whether we're really familiar with them, we pray so much that you'd help us to run back to you time and again, to trust in your goodness and to trust and enjoy your love. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man. Thank you, uh, Reverend Chris, for that thought provoking message. And thinking about that message, whether you're coming back to God is with very wide and sure footed welcome, or whether you're coming with those small and tentative steps like that boy looking out for the handkerchief. I just wanted us to reflect and to think about that message. And in response to that, our next song, I want us to take prayerfully. And I'm going to do the drums while Bert play it. For, so Bert, if you can play it just gently while we all pray together. Jesus Christ, I think about your sacrifice, you became nothing that we might be saved. We take that song gently on us on our seats and prayerfully. Jesus Christ, think upon your sacrifice. Keep nothing all down to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of love, and I'm in that place once again. I'm in that place once again. And once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Now you are exalted to the highest place, King of all heaven, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at this saving grace, I'm full of praise once again. Yes, I'm full of praise once again. And once again, I look upon the cross where died. I think of all your mercy, and I'm broken inside. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. And once again, hallelujah. And once again, I look upon 
the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. And thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Amen. So shall we rise as we affirm our faith? Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world, we believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sit while Sister Debbie brings us our intercessory prayers. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of all creations, the Alpha and the Omega, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we give you thanks and praise for your mercy and grace, for giving us the privilege to enjoy this new day that you have created. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear God, who in your love and mercy sent down to earth your only begotten son to die for our sins, mercifully grant that all mankind should recognize your love expressed by our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we love one another as God loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of the world. We pray for those areas where there are war and conflicts. We pray that you will bring an end to the war between Ukraine and Russia and other places. Where there is war, you will bring peace. You are the king of peace. May the leaders of the world seek your guidance in their decision making. Provide help for the refugees. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the Christian churches throughout the world. With the awareness of your presence, may we enjoy the unity with God. Enlighten all the church leaders with wisdom and understanding that they may spread your gospels with boldness and make disciples from all the nations. We pray for our archbishops. We pray for our archbishop of Canterbury, Bishop Christopher and Bishop Carraway, Archdeacon Alistair and all their families. May you guide and protect them with your blessings, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring before you our clergy. We thank you for appointing Reverend Chris Hanning 
to lead this church. We are blessed. And may your Holy Spirit be with him always. Guide and protect him and his family always. We pray for Reverend Abigail, Reverend Pat, Reverend Ann, and their families. May you bless them. We pray for Georgia. We pray for Christian, Shola, and their families. We pray for our church wardens, Daniel and Bosola, and their families. We bring before you all others who render their help in many different ways to move this church forward. Men's group, Mother's Union, Sunday school teachers, the intercessors, the choir and the organist, life group, the welcomers, the cleaners, and others. May God meet all, may, may God meet all of them at the points of their various needs. May God make a way for them where there seems to be no way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we bring before you our families and friends here this morning and of those who are unable to worship with us today. We pray that God will guide and protect our children wherever they are. Give them wisdom to pray for directions. We pray for the bereaved, for God to comfort them. We pray for the sick in body, in mind, and in spirit. We pray for Anna, Gwen, Joyce, Lavita, Filipina, Velma, Avri, Mili D, Aris, Tony L. W. and family, Connie and the Reverend Canon Olu, Lance and Josephine Rosage, and the Reverend Sheridan James, Herbert, Carrie Ann, Natalie and Linda. Please name aloud or in the quietness of your heart those who need our prayers this morning and also bring before God your personal prayers. Father God, you know everybody's needs. You will meet us at the points of our needs. Heal the sick, comfort the bereaved, give shelter to the homeless, give jobs to the job seekers, feed the poor. We believe that with you, all things are possible. Your promise in Jeremiah 32, verse 27 said, that you are the God of all mankind. There is nothing too, too hard for you to do. Your promises never fail. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Sister Debbie. Um, shall we rise as we share the peace? The peace of the Lord be also with you. And also with you. Let us share with each other. Sign of the peace. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you, Chris. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
We remain standing as we sing our offertory song, O Church Arise. So our favorite song that Chris introduced us to, so we keep singing it. Uh, o Church Arise. Church Arise, O Church Arise. Hear the words of Christ our captain. For now the weak can say that they are strong in the strength that God has given. We shed of faith and belt of truth to stand against the devil, smiles and army bold whose battle cry is love. Reaching out to those in darkness. Our call to war, to love the captive soul, but to rage against the captor. And with a song that makes the wounded whole, we will fight with hate and valor. When faced with trial, Yes, every side we know the outcome is secure, and Christ we have the price for which he died, an inheritance of nations. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise. Shine for the risen sun. Lift your eyes. We are his radiant bride. Arise, O church. Arise. Just to see the cross where love and well, to saw this tree came, then see his foes, like cross beneath his feet. To start to try that swan, to turn to swell, his cross is free. Lives day and every time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gifts. From the Lord you've given unto us, we will glorify and we will worship you. We thank you for your blessings in our hands. And we pray, Lord, that they will be returned unto you to the greater extent of that. May this be committed to your work in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Retelling triumphs of his grace. We hear the cause and hunger for the day when Christ shall stand in glory. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise, shine. For the risen sun, lift your eyes. We are his radiant bride. Arise, O John. Arise. Sing that chorus again. Arise. Arise, shine. For your light has come. Arise, shine for the risen sun. Lift your eyes. We are his radiant 
bright. Arise, O child, arise. Amen. Please be seated. So we've come to a time of thanksgiving. Um, perhaps there's any in the house that um, have had that message from Chris about coming back to God, coming back, returning back to God. And if God, something that is left, God is left in your spirit through the last week that you want to thank God for or you want to glorify God for, this is your opportunity to come forth and to testify before God. So, anyone? Is there anyone to watch? give thanksgiving? Stephen, come forward. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, Stephen, just tell us your name and bring us your testimony. And My name is Steve Williams. Good morning, St. John's. Morning. On Friday, I went to Clapham, where I used to live, because there's an exhibition there of photographs by the photographer Jim Grover, who is also church warden at St. James, which I used to visit, although I didn't worship there. And I got there in the afternoon, and he'd left a note to say that he had been, that he was coming back, but he had to go somewhere else. And so I sat at the table looking at the phone, making some notes. And the security lady, she brought in a homeless man. And he sat next to me. And she said to him, would you like some cake? And he said, yes. So she brought him her cake. And she said, you sit there because you have every right to do that. And she said to him, do you know the drop-in centre by St. Mary's Church? And of course I knew where that was. And he said yes, but I, I, I don't think he did know. So I said to her, I will take him round there. And then he got up. The cake was still on the table. So I said, don't you want to finish your cake? And he said, no. And then he started walking out. So I walked with him to show him the way. And as we walked along the high street, I said, my name's Steve. And then he told me his name, but I couldn't make it out because he spoke so softly. And then I, then he said it was Antonio. So I won't tell you anything else about him because it's not relevant. He was a homeless man and he needed help. So we walked along the high street, it was only about five minutes, and he took out a can of soft drink, opened it and took some sips. And then he threw the can into the road. And I said, you shouldn't have done that. And he explained to me, but I couldn't hear, his voice was so soft, I couldn't hear what he was saying, but it was an explanation of why he had done that. So then we got nearer the church, and I said to him, You are a good man. And I said to him, from today, things will get better for you. And I said, I will pray for you. And he said, thank you, Steve, in his quiet voice. Then we got to the drop-in center 
and it was, they were just closing, and the chap behind the railing said to me, we're closed now, and I think he thought that we were just going there for a coffee. And I said, this is Antonio, and he's homeless. And straight away they, they said, well, we'll register him then. And they took him in, and then all of a sudden I was left on my own. So I came back to the library, and Jim told me later, Jim Grover, that the exhibition is continuing for the rest of the month because it's been so popular. So I'll go back, because it's not far, and then I'll ask, because I didn't, I didn't get the chance to ask how Antonio is faring. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Yes. Um, so if you just tell us your name and what your, <laughs> your testimony is. I'm Julie Oko, and I just want to give thanks to God for his grace and... If I start explaining why I say that, we're not going to leave here today. <laughs> but I, I'll try and say that there are certain things that God put in my heart, you know, and then I see them come to pass. And I just, I mean, one of them is um, at the start of the pandemic, I just had this dream that we'll all come back to the office, back to our office where I work, and that there was somebody there who, you know, the senior uh, management team placed there to and they were going to have some sort of a get together, you know. And on my first day back to work, although I had a chat with one of the senior managers, which prompted me to actually return to work on that day. But when I got in, I didn't tell him that I was there. And then he came down. Somehow, one of the managers who saw me downstairs told him. And then he came down to say hello to me. So I was really like overwhelmed. And it, was, it just was like, it just like was my. You know, as though I saw the dream that I had at the start of um, um, of the pandemic. So it turns out that I was actually the one who was going to plan to get together. You know, I, I didn't see that at coming at all. So as we were chatting, I just said, he said, he really wanted people to come back to the office. I said, you really want that? So I said, oh, do you mind being um, like interviewed? We'll have a live interview and people will come in, you know, to encourage people to come back. And he said, yeah, he didn't mind. And it was so unusual because it's not something I would normally ask him because he's quite, you know, high above me, you know. Um, so I, I sort of, after he said yes, I, when I went back home and I sent him this email to say, look, are you sure about that? He said, yeah. And then I started to think, how am I going to pull this off? And so I called one of my uh, colleagues I had worked with some years ago. Uh, and so we started from there and we planned it. So we've had, you know, from one get together, we now have five of them. So we've had two, and it is so successful. And I was this very quiet mouse in the office. Now I'm so suddenly known by everyone in the office, and I'm thinking, oh, how did that happen? You know. So I just wanted to say, you know, thank to God because it just gave me this, um, you know, conviction that He will give me what I want, and He's He's the one who planted it in my mind because I never thought of it, you know. And it's just like it just reminded me of what um, Chris was preaching about that. You know, God, he makes the first move. You know, it's not really only in us coming back to him. And sometimes when he wants us to do something or he wants to promote us or do something nice to us, he sends us the, you know, he makes the first move. He gives us the, the message first before we bring it to pass. I, I just wanted to say thank God and to remind us of this song that we normally sing here. Um, only by grace can we enter, only by grace can we stand, not by the human endeavors, but by the blood of the Lamb. Into your presence you draw us, you call us to come. 
Into your presence you call us, and now by your grace we come. And now by your grace we come. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's just take one moment to pray for uh, Stephen, for Antonia, and for Julie, uh, for bringing those uh, words of testimony to confirm what the Spirit of God was doing in their minds and in their encounters with Stephen and Antonio, and with Julie and her bosses in the office. And would, Lord, we just thank you because your word is yes and amen. Father, you are ever constant presence in our life. And as you make those move towards us each and every day, Father, you say you are next to us, near us. Open our eyes, Lord, that we will see you. May your spirit lead us to make those move towards you, to accept the love that you shed upon the cross for us and to draw nearer and nearer each to you every single day. Father, may the days of rejoicing and the days of testimonies never cease in our lives to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, do we have notices and news? I've been away for two Sundays, so I don't... <laughs> Chris, do you want to come forward or the board is doing it? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, there are a few notices on the, on the service sheet. So do um, uh, take a good moment to have a look through those. Um, yes, um, serving refreshments after the service is great to have refreshments to just help us have time together. Um, if you are able to be part of that, serving that, uh, do please talk to myself or to Shola. That would be such a help so that we can do that as often as we possibly can. Um, thank you for that. Um, there's the note for the church ADM, AGM in a few weeks' time. There's um, this pilgrimage to Coventry Cathedral, uh, beginning of June. Um, the church anniversary, the beginning of July. Um, and a couple of special things for today. Uh, so, last calls for sending in any reports for the uh, church ATM in a few weeks' time. But today, um, please, as soon as possible, can you get in any final reports? Uh, thank you. And today especially uh, is the day, is the day for signing up to the, uh, the, uh, the church electoral roll, which is the official register of uh, the church here. Uh, so if you have lived within the, the parish and worshipped um, over the past six months, um, either lives. If you've been here over the past six months, let me be clear about that. <laughs> uh, then you're so welcome to join the electoral roll, um, and there's a form for that. We can just do it today easily. Uh, do talk to myself or talk to um, Yvonne. Yvonne is waving an arm there. Uh, today really is the day to do that, and the last chance for that. But if you need to change any of your address details, things like that, um, have I got that right? I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, great. I think that's... If you just wait, Chris, just yeah. in case. Any birthdays? Oh, okay, so they want to come forward then. <laughs> Not your birthday, yeah, but you can still come forward. Any other any birthdays? Anyway, if you just come forward so we can um, get them all done. Felicity, yeah? Sorry, just one more notice yes, okay. that I was told. Right. Um, it's just a mother's union. Um, we'll be meeting after the service today. So please don't forget if you're in Mother's Union. Thanks, Ms. If you tell us your name, and yes, on that one. So, uh, my name's Felicity, and my birthday was last Wednesday. I won't tell you what age I was, but <laughs> three score years, I think. Three times score years, and um, a bit, bit more. But. Three score <laughs> years and a bit more. That would do. That would do. Any other person? Before we sing, okay, but happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, 
Happy birthday, dear Felicity. Happy birthday to you. Chris, we can just pray for Felicity. Let's pray for Felicity. Thank Heavenly Father, thank you so much for life. You give us life. All life is from you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for Felicity, for her life and all the ways that you've shown her your grace. And we pray so much that as she remembers your grace to her and as she looks ahead, Father, she, she would know you as her Heavenly Father every single day and bring great gladness to her heart and guard and direct uh, by your Spirit in her life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. We're nearly at the end of our service this morning. So if we can just rise to our feet as we sing our final hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, be all as much not to me said that thou art. Be thou my best thought in the day and the night. O waking and sleep. Thy presence, my light, be thou my vision, be thou my true word, be thou ever with me, and I with thee, Lord, be thou my Say our closing prayers. God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us 
as we go to live and walk in the power of your spirit. To your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Amen. Amen.